I'm in a little disco or something. Yeah. Anyway, I'm here to teach you how to make this. First, you want to open your content browser in the bottom left. And of course, we want to organize your stuff on like a certain someone in my class. Not naming names. You want to make a new folder. And in that new folder, you can call this folder whatever you want. I personally call mine post-process material because that's what we'll be making today. In that folder, of course, you want to right click and then click on material. I'm naming mine post-process material. You want to open up the material. And first, we have a couple things. In the left, we have everything we need like post-process because that's what we'll be focused on today because nothing else is important because there is so much within the material universe post-process material we've now set it to post-process so as you can see only on the right there'll only be emissive color to start out we're going to need a scene texture node and once we grab that scene texture node we want to go over to its properties and change that scene texture node into a post process input of course in the details pad select the scene texture node you want to change the post process input zero now, isn't that cool you want to hold down three and take out a three vector node or a constant three vector or i like to call it the natural color node take out your little color node and I'm gonna give mine yellow. You can give yours whatever color you want. I will tell you now though, this does affect the outcome, whatever color you choose. And make sure, unlike me, who forgot to change the, the lightness value from literal zero to any other value, uh, you wanna change that lightness value to something other than black, because right now it's only gonna show up as black. Right now I'm blending the overlay. The base is the post-process input and the blend is the black. And so they blend together. Isn't that cool? Now, what if that was disco? So we get a rotor and we put it into blend. Done. Or are we? You see, this isn't a Unreal Engine project if I didn't overcomplicate things. And there I go, fixing uh, the light value, by the way. Um, if I didn't overcomplicate things in the Unreal Engine aspect, this wouldn't be an Unreal Engine tutorial video. So I'm going to overcomplicate things. All right, so basically I added this linear interpolation node that makes the color just look a pop a little bit more and then I hooked that up into the blend, into another linear interpolation node, into a desaturation. You see, and off of the first linear interpolation node, I have a mask red. So I'm masking the red color that's coming out and I'm putting it into a chroma key alpha. So I'm taking away from the masked red. And I have a red min scalar and a red max scalar. And I have those plugged into alpha cutoff. I plug the alpha into alpha for the second linear interpolation. And I connected another scalar value to the fraction of the desaturation. This makes it look like a really cool. Now imagine if this was like five. The desaturation node makes everything all wonky. It's like you stop time in Jojo part three. Anybody watch that Jojo reference? Did I just make this a Jojo reference? Back to our tutorial, I plug the desaturation into the emissive color, and out comes the post-process material, the disco version. So with everything done with that, we're going to go on into our third person blueprint. So I made a third person game mode. You can make any other game mode you want, as long as you have a camera. This will be important in a second. You want to navigate to your third person blueprint. And right here at the bottom of my content, in my content drawer, is a third person folder. I open blueprints and I open BP third person. So first, I'm going to take out an F key. You could, this can be any key you want as long as it isn't W, A, S, or D. 
and then I connect it to a flip-flop node. This will be our little switch. Stop thinking that. I know what you're thinking, it's not that. Type in and take out a create dynamic material instance. And then plug in our post-process material tutorial or your post-process material into the parent. Now, uh, you see me searching for a camera, but in all honesty, I'm just gonna trick you and grab the actual camera that's gonna be used and then move it, drag out of it, of course, and find the post-process settings. You want to have that as set. And then you pull out of the post-process settings, click on the first thing that shows up all the way at the bottom, make post-process settings. Drop down menus within the details panel. On the far right, once you have selected your make post-process settings, you wanna scroll all the way down. So right now we wanna to go to post-process materials as pin, and you wanna select that in the checkbox. We want to pull out of post-process materials and we're going to look for make weighted blendables. And out of make weighted blendables, we're going to make an array. Nope, can't plug that in there. Nope, can't, stop, hey, stop, stop, stop. We want to drag out and we want to make weighted blendable. And out of the make weighted blendables, you want to right click the weight part and promote it to a variable. Now, your variable, once created, will show up in the bottom left as a variable. You want to drag out that weight value. You want to get set weight and you want to duplicate it too, because we're going to turn this on and off. Plug it, both of them into the create dynamic instance and create plug the create dynamic instance into the post process settings. This is important because if the dynamic instance or the post process setting doesn't get any information or execution, it will not execute the code and or logic that's being put into it. I changed the value of set on the top where it's connected to A on the flip flop node up into a one in that little number box. Keep the other one zero. This will change the blend weight on top to one, making it visible, and the blend weight at the bottom to zero, making it invisible. Now we're in a disco world. Now could I make this more complicated? 100% I can. So we're going to add an add node in front of the color and we're going to connect a scalar to it called the color strength because this is the strength of the color. You can mess around with this value as much as you want until you see fit. And then you want to move over to the rotator and you want to go to the speed. And you want to change that from 0.25 to 1 just so it changes color faster. You can set that to any value you want. And look at that. Disco Adventures. Call me Disco Adventure man get your desired texture drag and drop right here i'm just going to grab out the desaturation note so i only get the two colors black and white it's basically grayscale but you know same difference who cares now i'm going to plug this desaturation into the b value and the alpha value and i'm going to move this weird long thing over. I'm gonna plug the top desaturation that we used from before into the A part, and then plug that linear interpolation node that I just made into the emissive color. And behind the texture sample, or our texture of choice, I'm going to add a panner just cause I can. And I go into its details in the left panel and I, you can manipulate these values. Speed X is left and right, and speed Y is up and down. When you mix them together, they can go in any direction in a 2D plane. But that is about it. Now, bada bing, bada boom. Look at me. You, like, I'm in a disco RGB gamer snowstorm. That's like, you could put this in a certain biome. You can allow me to be in a certain biome and it would work. Like I, I'm in a snow, 
snow biome and I collected a Mario star at the same time. Mario star? Super star? 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 Mar what is it called? Hey! Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, if, if you really enjoyed, you should actually, you know, like the video. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe even subscribe. You should subscribe. This video was made for YouTube. This, I hope it's on YouTube. Is it supposed to be? Why do I keep doing that? No one's there. Um. Anyway, Uh. bye.